Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Being able to master the adjustment brush in Lightroom is probably the biggest secret weapon you can do in photo retouching. I cannot tell you how many times I got a photo approved when I was doing interior design because I used the brush, the adjustment brush, or how many times I got published into magazines or that a gallery took a photo for me because I added that extra light using the brush. So in this video, I really want to show you how you can become a power user of the brush. If you stay until the end, I promise you that your level of being able to handle the brush and what you can do with it is gonna completely increase. We're gonna take this cat photo, which is just a regular cat, and take it from this to that. That is incredible, and that's only done using the Lightroom brush. It's an amazing tool, so let's go. I'm also gonna give you this file. This file you can download, the link is right under the video, so you can follow along. It's very important because it's a really cool cat photo and you can post it on social media. Just tag me at AdPhotoSurge if you can make it through this tutorial and follow along. So let's get started. So this is just a beautiful cat. Me and my wife were, you know, around in a very small village in Verdun, a south of France, and we saw this cat and we took this photo. And um, I'm gonna completely transform the photo using the Lightroom brush. It's just a great exercise to use the brush. First thing is I'm gonna crop this photo because I really want, I love his eyes. He's got like amazing blue eyes. So I'm gonna go all the way down, something like this. And I really wanna crop him so that we can see his face like this. Boom, look at that, what a beautiful cat. Pretty sharp photo. I worked hard on getting it sharp. And now, before we, can, we go into the brush, I just wanna make some adjustment. I'm gonna open up the shadows and I'm gonna bring down the highlights. And then I'm gonna do my black point holding the option key. That's the regular retouching that I do. Make sure I've got some strong black points and the white point, make sure I got some strong white point. It's just, it makes sure that you got a good contrast and all the information is, you know, well spread. Okay, so now, one thing I can do to help my brush is I can go into my UN saturation and I can basically desaturate the photo so I can desaturate the reds, the orange, uh, the yellow, uh, the green, and I can make the blue stronger. And the, yeah, the blue and the aqua. But you see what happens, it makes the, the eyes more saturated, but we still have some blue here on, the, on his fur that's coming up and I'm gonna minus out the purple and the magenta. So. How can we correct that? Because I don't want this blue there. I only want the blue in his eyes. Well, here comes the brush. So I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna go to saturation. That's gonna make, and that's a really cool trick. Uh, or you can also double click on the, on the effect. It's gonna put everything down to zero. Or you can pick up an item like saturation and everything is gonna to come to zero but whatever is going on on saturation. So on saturation, I'm gonna go minus 100 and uh, I'm gonna make sure that my flow is 100% and density. So what is flow and density? Well, flow and density is basically is the power of your brush, okay? Now in this case, I do wanna have a full power because I want to erase uh, all the colors. Uh, feather, you wanna make sure that feather is uh, 100%. Let me show you. If your feather is at 0% and let's say I'm adding some exposure, look what's, what's happening. You can see the marks you know, of the brush. You don't want that, so Command Z to undo. So I'm gonna double click on effect so everything comes down to zero. And then I'm just gonna put the feather all the way to 100. So feather is all the way to 100. So we got a very smooth brush and flowing density is full power, okay? Now what are we gonna do with this brush? Well, we are going to do some minus saturation. And also one thing is important is make sure auto mask is off. Auto mask is a feature that's gonna to try to basically mask things for you automatically. And I'll show you a good example with his eyes here. But first, I'm gonna go away from his eyes and I'm just gonna brush. And you see, I'm just taking out any colors which were left from our saturation adjustment that we did earlier, okay? Uh, but there are still some colors around the eyes. So what you can do is you can put auto mask on and check this out. You see there is a little plus in the middle of the brush. Okay, if I use this plus and I go around his eyes, I'm gonna desaturate everything around his eyes but his eyes. Okay, if auto mask was not on and I would do the same thing, I would completely desaturate his eyes, or not completely, but I would desaturate it a little bit. So come in Z to undo. So you want auto mask to be on. Voila. And I'm just gonna desaturate around the eyes. 
Okay, now I really want to make his eyes pop. So, now that I've desaturated everything but his eyes, I'm going to go and create a new brush. And this time I'm going to zoom in on his eyes. And um, I'm going to do what? I'm going to double click on effect to put everything to zero. And I'm going to add some exposure and add some clarity. This is what is amazing with brushes, is you can do different things at the same time. So on this one, I'm just going to brush. So I'm brushing exposure and I'm brushing clarity at the same time. Now it's too much. So I'm going to back down the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to add some saturation too to remake really it pop and maybe just a bit of highlights a little bit. So I'm adding exposure, I'm hiding highlights, I'm adding clarity, I'm adding saturation all at the same time. I could even add some dehaste to make them more contrasty, but in this case, it's not a good idea. Um, voila, voila, voila. And I could even change his eyes color if I wanted to. I could, uh, you know, add some red to add some red in his eyes, uh, but that's kind of weird, so I'm not going to do that. And the way you add color is you can pick any color, and you, as you go up, the color is more vivid, and as you go down, it becomes less vivid. And I don't want to add any color, so voila, because his natural blue color was amazing. Okay, good. So now I can show before the brush where we stand, and after the brush, you see, we took out all the blue and made his eyes pop even more. Okay, good. Uh, I think there is, uh, we're missing some colors here. So one thing you can do, and that's very important with brushes, is when you hover over the brush here, you can see what I did here. I actually, when I brushed this one, by mistake, I brushed over his eyes. So what I can do is I can go on Show Selected Mask Overlay, I can click on that, and it's gonna show me where, you know, what I did wrong. So how to correct that? Well. You just take your finger, you press the Alt key, and now your brush becomes an eraser. There's a mi minus sign, and I'm just going to erase what I did here on, on inside the eyes for that brush. Okay, now let's take this brush here and see if I didn't do anything stupid. Oh yes, I did something stupid, so I'm going to erase, I'm going to make it bigger. I don't want it to, to touch the eyes. Uh, I really want the eyes to pop. So I can use the eraser to just make the eyes pop. And if you want to see what, what that brush is doing, you see that brush was the minus, uh, you know, the minus saturation brush. And this one was also a minus saturation brush. I actually did two brushes like this, okay? And this one is the one that's for the eyes. Oh, you see? So now this one, I can see the mask and it's going a little too much. So I can hold on the Option key and I can make sure this mask really takes care of his eyes and doesn't go anywhere else, like on his fur or anything. And uh, you can make it bigger or smaller, the eraser or the brush, by the middle button on your mouse. Okay, and then I can go back to plus. I want to make sure that this mask really takes into account his eyes. And I can click show select mask overlay out and check this out. On this one, I think I want to make his eyes a little bit brighter, just a tad. Not that I know I got it. Ooh, cat's eyes are very known to be very powerful. So that's maybe too much, but something like this is kind of cool. Okay, but that's not all. The eyes goes to the brightest part of the photo. So I'm going to create a new brush. And this time I want to make everything dark except his face. So I'm going to make sure my brush is big. And this is where I double click on effect. I'm going to go minus exposure. And this time I am not going to use Auto mask and flow and density. I don't want it to be too much because if I start brushing with my, you know, with flow and density bit at a hundred, my brush strokes are going to be too obvious. So I'm going to command Z that, and I'm just going to put flow and density around 70, 80 ish, something like this. And I want to make, I basically want to close in the photo. So I'm brushing darkness around him. My computer is lagging. Somebody, uh, gave a comment saying that I should change computer and he is totally right. I need to get the latest MacBook Pro. Oh, by the way, guys, I want to ask you, if you like this video, please take a second and like this video. It makes a huge difference because it helps me that, so that other people can see the video. So just click the like button and also leave me a comment. Tell me what you would like to learn. I read every single comment, every one of them. And so, and I answer every one of them. And so just take a second, comment anything. If you comment something on this video and you like it, it's going to help spread the video and more people can see it and it helps me being able to make more free videos. Okay, 
and I've done over 400 and I make twice per week, every Tuesday and every Friday. So thank you for liking, commenting, and if you can share, that's like next level help. You really wanna help me, share the video. Okay, so now I'm just brushing around him. Now it's not strong enough, so why maybe I'm not brushing in a value. And you see some, yeah, some uh, blue is coming back, but that's fine. We can, uh, we can deal with that later. I really want to make him come out of the darkness. The darkness. Look at this cat. Uh, unfortunately, my daughter has her allergy on cats, but I love cats. I would totally have one. That's why we have dogs and not cats, but I love, I love every animal. Uh, I think animals are amazing. So um, you see now we've got some blue left, so I'm going to click new. I'm going to double click. I'm going to go to saturation. I'm going to go all the way on flow and density, and I'm going to take out saturation here voila and that's that's like dodge and burn on steroid okay i want to add one more layer of darkness because i think here is too bright here and too bright there so i'm going to create a new brush i'm going to double click on effect minus exposure and maybe a big brush i want to i just don't want people to look at the top of his head as like the first thing they do okay that's way too much you can really control where the lights is and where people are gonna watch, you know, where the shadow is, where the light is, just with this technique of brush. Okay, now I wanna make his face brighter, so I'm gonna create a new brush, and this time I'm gonna go plus, and I just wanna, you know, make sure people look at his face. So I just wanna add a bit of light here, and you can see my computer is lagging, but that's, um, that's life. Okay, yeah, a little too much, so I'm gonna back it down, back it down, back it down, and let, let me see, that's my reference photo. So this was my original test. Every time I do a tutorial, I do some tests. And this is where I am at now. Complete different photo. I mean, the eyes, you know, but uh, he's more into the grayish stuff. So maybe it's not a good idea uh, to, uh, maybe I want to erase some of this brush. So I can go here. I think this is the one. And remember, if you put your mouse over, you can see where the overall is. I think I'm going to leave the white on. And uh, maybe add some more darkness around him. So new brush, and you just keep on stacking brush over and over and over. And it's just a, it's like painting on a photo. I had a friend in the 70s that was doing film retouching. And she was telling me sometimes she would paint with brushes light for over 18 hours. Uh, so, ooh, I went crazy on that. So I'm gonna back it down. But remember, you can just back it down. It's, it's completely non-destructive. I can use the Alt key and uh, erase what I did here, because I like what it does over there, but not what it does here. Voila. Ooh, what a cat, look at that. And now, I think to sh just finish it off, I'm gonna boost the white a little bit on this photo. Uh, yeah, just to have the overall face, maybe bring down the blacks even further. I really want heavy contrast. And then I'm going to go, oh, one thing that's really important. You see how blurry he is around him? I see a lot of people doing this mistake. They add sharpening everywhere. You're better off taking the brush, double clicking, and adding sharpening. I can add some clarity and some sharpening just where I'm brushing, you know, making sure flow and density is at 100%. And I'm just gonna add a bit of sharpening just right here in the front of his uh, nose and nowhere else. So he really sticks out. Okay, so that's where we are now. This is my first test. Let me just compare. Complete different value. I think I like more the one I did just now. And you can download the file, you can follow along, you can post it on your Instagram, and I'm sure the photo is gonna do well and help you get followers. Tag me at photo search, and I will forward it in my stories. Okay, this is where we are. I love the adjustment brush in Lightroom. I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to like and comment. And now I have a surprise for you. Here's a playlist with my best Lightroom videos for free. Check it out.